They had their hands full with the guy on the other side of the ball in Justin Herbert. And think about, and this is what I learned about him, right? When you talk about what you learn about him, I knew he could make big throws, a 64-yard pass, all this kind of stuff. You, we already knew that about him so far this early in his very young career. But you know what you want to see? With the game on the line, can you make the play your team absolutely has to make? And with the game on the line, he made a beautiful pass, and it was a beautiful catch, to put them into field goal position. It's not his fault. The field goal kicker misses the field goal. It goes off against the uprights, right? Like, that would have won the game. And now you go to overtime, and, and they score against you, and now what can you do? Can you do it again? And did he come up a half yard short? Yes, he did. Is that what the defense gave him? Fine. They could have easily, easily been in field goal position again. That could have easily, like they missed it by a half and a, a yard. He did it again. It's one thing to say you came through under pressure, but, you know, it could have easily gone the other way. It was lucky. But to do it again, to complete the pass, it didn't work out in their favor. But to do it again shows something. He didn't think the game was over. He didn't think he'd already done it or, or, or you know, threw up his hands. Well, that's all I got. And he's been doing this all of his very young career. He's 21, and he's making throws like this with the game on the line under pressure? Like, that, that was – he's been extraordinary so far. And when you think about the moment on Monday Night Football against a future Hall of Famer, and by the way, they came back on you, right? Like, to make the pass, to even put him in field goal position, to win the game outright in regulation – they came all the way back on you, and yet he led them to that position. I am, I, you know, Justin Herbert, people forget, was supposed to be the, he was like the presumptive number one overall pick a couple years ago, and it didn't quite work out that way, and so he, he stays in school. He doesn't come out for the draft, and based on how the following season went, you went, okay, he's probably going to fall in the draft. Went a little higher, I think, at least than I anticipated, and has totally justified it. You can see especially last night, again, why a couple seasons ago people looked and said, that guy might be a guy to tank for. People forget that already, but he's showing, he's reminding everyone why people thought that about him in the first place. You know he's tall, you know he has an arm and everything. He's also now showing the kind of intangibles that you need to see from a young pro in a game situation. I've been very impressed. All of us have been very, very impressed with Justin Herbert. But the reason why I would tell you, it's not that we're not learning anything because what we're learning is that maybe he should have been taken ahead of Tua Tagovailoa, but we'll wait and see because once he gets into a game, we'll see what he brings to the table. Uh, but clearly he had talent. He was, you know, we, we understand that. But in the end, I'm going to tell you that at this particular moment in time, Max, I'm more pri uh, focused on Drew Brees than Justin Herbert. The reason why I'm not that uh, focused on Justin Herbert is even though I'm monitoring and watching him as a talent, in the same breath, the Chargers are playing with house money to some degree because Tyrod Taylor got hurt early. As a result, he was thrusted into the position significantly earlier than we had anticipated. I view him as playing with house money, so whoever he's going up against, uh, particularly with minimal film to watch on him, et cetera, et cetera, you know, anything that he gives us is dressing. And we'll see as the future goes on. Now, once upon a time, there was a guy that was thrusted into the spotlight by the name of Dan Marino, and we saw what kind of career that he had. So certainly the capability is there, and we look at him, and I'm impressed with the guy. He's got arm talent, which is something that I never viewed as Phillip Rivers really, really having. When it comes to Drew Brees, however, here's where I learned so much now. He's doing it without Michael Thomas. We know how reliant upon Michael Thomas, Drew Brees has been for the last several years. We know what an all-world receiver Michael Thomas was, is. rather. He's been out for a few games because of injury, and then he came back and ended up getting himself suspended because he punched somebody in the face in practice, according to reports, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you've got Emmanuel Sanders, who's new to the team, Traquan Smith, Jared Cook, Alvin Kamara. These, uh, Kamara is an elite weapon. The other guys are good weapons. But in the end, because of Drew Brees' history of relying so much on Michael Thomas, for him to do what he's doing right now, complete 71% of his passes, nine touchdowns, just three interceptions, since game one against uh, uh, Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he hasn't thrown for, he's completed like 68%. Then it was mm -hmm. 80%, 78%, 77%. This dude is doing it. And so I'm looking at it from that perspective, and I'm saying, Drew Brees, 
is reminding us of his greatness and letting you know not only was it not just contingent on Michael Thomas, but it also wasn't no. contingent on just playing at the Superdome in front of or the Mercedes-Benz Dome now in front of that rabid home base. That's not the case anymore. No matter where he's going, the level of efficiency he is bringing with him, and I'm impressed by that for Drew Brees to be at this age, at well, this stage in his career, without his primary weapon to be doing what he has been doing, I appreciate what I'm seeing from him, and that's why that's the name that comes to my mind for this particular question. What, Drew Brees wasn't on the field when they tied the game. That was that was Taysom Hill who ran the ball in. And and well, if you talk about well, what someone can do without last night, certain did not. guys, it, sure, did not play sure, last but night? when we talk I'm about, talking about the game, I'm not talking learned, about a sequence or a play. Yeah, but that was with the game on the line. Meantime, uh, Justin Herbert did that late. Those late game would be heroics. No Keenan Allen. Like, I, I'm not taking anything away from Drew Brees. Drew Brees is one of the all-time greats. But that's – but, like, I knew everything about Drew Brees I needed to know. Justin Herbert is now in three games against top ten – like, we'll see what happens with Mahomes. I'd assume a top ten all-time guy by the time he's done. Certainly Brady and Brees are. He's played those three guys this early in his career. And when you look at the game, it, it's hard to say that he was the second best quarterback in the, on the field. He looked like he belongs with those guys already yeah. and does it when it matters most. I learned more about Justin Herbert. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.